Hey, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto. I hope you guys are having a great day. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. In this video, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about the adapools.org website. Now, this video, I'm just going to be giving you guys my thoughts on how you can go about choosing the best staking pool in the incentivized testnet for Cardano. So a lot of people who are participating in the incentivized testnet do have quite a few questions as to how they can maximize their returns by delegating their stake. Um, if you are running your own stake pool, this video is going to be something that's probably not going to benefit you as much as if you were to be delegating your stake. Um, so this video is going to be for you guys. If you are interested in this type of content, please be sure to drop a like for me. It lets me know that you guys enjoyed it. And if you do find some value, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So to get things started here, guys, we're taking a look at the adapools.org website. Um, and this is a great tool to be able to tell some certain metrics regarding the certain stake pool that you're going to be delegating to. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about that in this video. So what we have here, this is the adapools.org website. Uh, I'll go ahead and link to it in the description below if you guys want to go ahead and check it out. But what we're looking at here, so there's a list of the stake pools that are available in the incentivized testnet. And I know a lot of this looks kind of overwhelming, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the key things here. Uh, a lot of things are not as important as others, so we'll take a look at that here. Uh, something that is very important is the pool size. And as you guys can see here, this is like the first metric that they show for each respective stake pool. Uh, and guys, what I've noticed here, I've been participating in the incentivized testnet since it launched. Uh, the snapshot was on November 29th, and I think currently we're on Epoch 19 or 20, so about three weeks into it now. And uh, one thing that I've noticed here is that these pools tend to get very saturated uh, pretty quickly. And, you know, that's a good thing and a bad thing. And it's a good thing being that there shows that there's a lot of participation within the incentivized testnet. Um, you know, and as far as it, uh, you know, being a little bit of a drawback, uh, oversaturization of a stake pool will diminish your rewards over time. So it's something to keep a note on. Uh, a lot of these bigger stake pools, you know, you can see here IOHK, we see SCAR, that's uh, Philippe's stake pool, uh, Stake Nuts. A lot of these stake pools have now become to a point where they're saturated. And what that means is that there's there's so much stake within that particular stake pool that the rewards for the delegators are not as high as if they were to have been delegated to a stake pool with lower amount of stake. So the incentive mechanism that they're using with Cardano, it's, it's showing that it's uh, incentivizing people to delegate with smaller stake pools. So it's great for decentralization. Um, why would you not want to delegate to one of these larger stake pools? Well, because as you can see, this stake pool, it shows this little caution sign right here. It's showing that 2.78% of total available ADA to delegate is staked to this pool. And the return on investment for staking is an average of about 4%. So as you guys can see, the, the more saturated a stake pool is, the lower the returns. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're going to choose the stake pool that you'd like to delegate to. And I'm gonna show you guys some of my thoughts and, and what I like to look for to choose the best stake pool for me. Uh, and guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just trying to show you some things that I like to look for when choosing a stake pool to delegate to. So with that being said, of course, one of these types of stake pools, you know, I'm not too keen on that just because of the amount of stake already being delegated. So I'm going to avoid any type of stake pool that is already, I like to look for 1% or lower, right? Even 1% is kind of pushing it, but that's what I tend to look for for pool size. As far as um, average return on investment, that is something that's subjective. You know, if you're looking for the most return on your investment, then of course you're going to look for the highest ROI possible. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And another thing that is important to take note is the percentage that the stake pool charges uh, per epoch. So as you can see here, this is what we're looking at with tax, right? Tax is actually the percentage that the stake pool will claim for each epoch. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. 
you know, we can see here that this IOHK stake pool, and I'm using IOHK as an example, I'm not bashing IOHK, I'm just using it for example purposes and just putting things in a reference for you. We can see here that the IOHK stake pools, the tax per epoch is very high. It's a 14% tax. So for all of the ADA that is awarded for delegating to that stake pool and for all the blocks that they've mined within that epoch, the 14% is the cut that they will take for all that ADA that has been awarded to that stake pool. After the end of each epoch, the stake pool will take this percentage and the remainder is left to be awarded to the delegates. So this is a very high percentage. I would look for something a little bit lower when we can see here that there is a lot of competition and that's a really great thing because if we look right down here, Blue Cheese Steakhouse, they're only charging a 1% tax. So for each epoch, they are being awarded 1% of the ADA that is awarded to that stake pool. So, and that's something that keeps things very interesting within the ecosystem. Uh, you know, having, having different types of fee structures, it keeps the competition alive. Um, you know, 1% is a very competitive rate for a, a stake pool. But what we can see here with something like that, we can see that people have noticed that and they're taking advantage of it. This pool has come to a point where it's now saturated. So I would be concerned about something like that if you were looking for delegating your stake to this type of pool. Now, one thing I like to do with this website is I like to make some adjustments here. So we can see, I wanna go through the process with you guys of trying to find a stake pool that would be ideal to delegate to. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Of course, we can see here from looking at all this, these stake pools are saturated. So I'm not gonna be interested in staking or delegating to one of these stake pools. As we go down the list here, we can see that some of these stake pools are a little bit more attractive. There is less saturation and there's also a higher ROI because of that. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now, I don't know, let's, I did actually um, stake with Rick for quite a while, Digi, uh, very great ROI. As we can see here, you know, he's got a fair amount of stake that's being delegated to him. Very, very competitive tax as well, 6%. You know, I think for the servers that they're running, and guys, you gotta consider also that a lot of these stake pools are not at a point where they're currently profitable. I mean, just the cost of setting up an infrastructure for a server and, you know, getting all this, um, the, the software configured, that takes a lot of time. So, you know, a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these people who are in here early, these are the people who are really passionate about the Cardano ecosystem. And I think you're gonna see these people really paved the way for decentralization of the network. Uh, Rick and Philippe being two of the most prominent that I'm aware of. Uh, if you guys have your favorite stake pool, let me know down in the comment section below. I would love to give you guys you know, any type of feedback or give you guys my opinion and what I think about it. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's start a conversation. Just drop that in the comment section below. Um, and what we can see here, this is Rick's stake pool, Digital Fortress. So. You know, his average ROI was 15%, and that's fantastic. Uh, and it shows you the tax right here. This is the average tax per epoch. So let's go ahead and take a look at Rick's stake pool here. So I'm gonna click on that. And this gives us some more information as to the metrics that we can see here. And I'm just gonna give you an overview here. So this shows you the number of epochs, right? Shows you the date. This shows you the pool size. So we can see here that the pool size is variable right people choose to delegate and undelegate you know as time goes on and it shows you as well as the percentage of the pool size uh, the total number of ADA that's being delegated to that stake now stakers reward so that is in reference to the delegators right so the people who are delegating their stake to the stake pool this is the total number of ADA that is awarded to the pool for the delegates the pool's reward is what what Rick will earn, what Digi Digital Fortress will earn for each epoch for being online and minting blocks when he's selected. And this is gonna be the average ROI. So, you know, this shows you the percentage that you can expect to earn on your investment if you decide to delegate to the stake pool. So there's quite a few things to take a look at here. Um, for me personally, what I'm looking at is a low saturation, right? I want to be 
at, at a position where there are not a lot of people delegating to that stake pool. And that in turn actually helps with decentralization because it incentivizes smaller pools as well as bigger pools. Uh, I'm also looking for a low uh, percentage that the stake pool will charge to maintain the network. You know, that, uh, that actually increases profitability for delegators. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, there has to be some type of incentive for these stake pools. So it's, it's all about you know, putting things in perspective and finding that happy medium. Uh, and then the next thing I'm looking for is the ROI. I'm looking for the highest ROI possible uh, while keeping all those other things in a perspective as well. So that is what I have for you guys. That is typically what I look for when choosing a stake pool. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments regarding my process, or if you guys have any pointers that you would like to share with the community, please be sure to drop a comment down in the section below. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Until next time, take care.